Coming up on this program, we show you how to get connected, find out how to choose an internet service provider, discover the newest form of communication, electronic mail. for being late. <laughs> Everybody is good. The download is at 99%. It's going to go 100%. It's going to creed frame me, but I'm terrible at waiting for things. I have terrible patience. Uh, there it goes. Perfecto. Anyways, um, a bit of a late stream tonight, and I hope <laughs> it's a premiere. Is this a live? It's live, loud. I'm here. It's live. I promise. You're up late. What's going on? Um, yes, glad. A prop. They are fake. I don't like it when they cover my eyebrows. Full balance to make with the uh, with the glasses. Um. Oh, Chuck, that's terrible. I have sticky buns weed. Um, that is a dish. It's not actually not. It's fine. It's not that great. Um, the pink kush was better, but that's the way that life is. It sure does be old school downloading, Bev. Sort of, sort of. Come on. Sort of, sort of. Um, <laughs> the wrong day to quit, people. It is the right day to quit, loud. Whenever you can do that, because most days, you know, it's fuck, and then it's Tuesday, and then it's Wednesday, and then fuck it, it's Friday. Going right. Um, We are going back in time a little bit to a video that I found on the interwebs um, that I believe is a small claims court case. It is in Thurston County. Uh, it's part for an hour with my talking. I'm sure it's going to be more than that. That's the way that goes. Um. Mikey is heading off to Baltimore. You need to be safe. We've talked about that though. And you know, everybody was telling Mikey to be on his journey. And I am reminded of when I was in Chicago and everyone was aghast that I went out myself. Um, I mean, granted, I did have my shoulders out. I am not using Creed's internet. And I just had the internet people come and my upload is, but it is peak internet time right now. It's 1841, it's 6.41 PM. It is like peak internet time, but KLF is here. Wonderful. Oh, be sure to follow Kay's channel if you don't already. I'm sure you would. Mikey's channel as well. Ready? I'm sure you would. And Miss Iowa hit a thousand. Isn't that exciting? Um, and I've told my heart, but cellulite yoga pants, I know for a fact it's all love. <laughs> you guys poke fun at Mikey because you can. Um, Creed's internet was bad today. I asked Creed, I said to him, I was like, so what happens frame? Like, I would like to know because. I creed frame one I would like to know what he sees. Because what I see on my is muy interesante. And part of it is what I 
is happening is about, well, okay, hold on. Let's just give it the best shot we can. I closed every. Um, Hector's here. Hi. No, I can't even do it. My hands won't go backwards. Also, does do that. Is that too far back? That seems normal, but it seems too far back. I look like a watercolor painting. I'm going to take that as a compliment. Only a compliment. Riz? Oh, sad about that. I'm going to get off the screen. I'm just, I'm Add looking away so I can open up my electronic file, which has all. Oh my gosh, this is so old. An oil painting? Are you guys serious? That looks like an oil, a blurry oil painting, really? I swear to God, I, you know, I was in a meeting, a phone meeting earlier, and I think my camera was working. Oh, see, the internet symbol is gone now that I'm off the screen. Hold on. Part of it's lighting. See, anyways, regardless. Um, so this is an old case. What is he wearing on his head? Does it count as a hat? With me on the screen, it is just dragging. It's dragging. Anyways, I blame my hunger. I think I think creed frames and internet have a direct correlation with how hungry. Yeah, I can hear somebody coughing outside. I don't think I need a new camera with my 1080p camera, but maybe I do need a new camera. Promise you that. Anyways, let's just listen and watch. This is the same judge we see all the time. She doesn't wear a mask anymore. This is old. All the documents and all of your exhibits. And we've got a, uh, first we've got the um, claim by Mr. Malik. And then we have a counterclaim from Mr. Lorenzen. Let's see. Gender oath before we start here. 8917 versus 2208. All right. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Malik, why don't you raise your right hand and do you swear from the information you give the court today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Mr. Lorenzen, raising your right hand, do you swear from the information you give the court today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. All right. So, um, when did this counterclaim, I'm just trying to make sure everyone's got notice of what's going on here. Um, you filed your counterclaim the 29th, Mr. Lorenzen. Were you able to get that served on Mr. Malik? I, I paid a process server to take it to what I believed where he, or where he used to live where, back in 2018. Okay. And they didn't contact me until the 2nd of February and told me that they weren't able to locate him. Okay. And then so I, I overnighted it from here to the Chula Vista, California. Okay. So and you're supposed to have received it on Wednesday. All right. So, I, I know I was late, but yeah. So Mr. Malik, um you were able to let's see your notice. So Mr. Malik, when were you able to get notice to Mr. Lorenzen of your claim? Uh, just a moment. You have that in here somewhere in your exhibit? January 10th. So yeah. you received that notice, Mr. Lorenzen? Yes. On January 10th? Okay. Yes. And there are several documents that Mr. Malik has filed with the court. Um, did you have a chance to review those as to that claim? I have. Okay. And so, Mr. Malik, you're in California? Yes. All right. Um, <laughs> As if we couldn't tell he's in California because of his hat. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> you heard the 
action, and I understand Otter may have just recently received notice of Mr. Lorenzen's counterclaim. Did you ever get that? No, I have not. Okay, so um, that's a problem. Um, I think what we need to do is reset the matter so that Mr. Lorenzen, you can get that counterclaim to Mr. Malik, and Mr. Malik then would have time to look at all of your uh, exhibits as well and be pre prepared. I'm not going to take this piecemeal. It's better to take everything at once because the claim is about $9,000 and then your counterclaim is about $2,200 um, about this car repair. And um, so, oh, okay, great. So we're looking at, so Mr. Malik, are you still, you're Chula Vista, California on Ote Lakes Road? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so we're looking at March 19. We're looking at March 19 as the earliest date to reset this to. Mr. Malik, you available? Uh, can I just accept the counterclaim? Um, well, I'm not going to go forward without it being served and without you having an opportunity to look at what the heck it's all about in his exhibits. I did, so, I did look at it on the, uh, the, the exhibit portal. All right. So on the exhibit portal. All right. So you did review the counterclaim? Yes. All right. And I have really making me laugh. I mean, it's up to you. Um, I want to make sure that everybody's ready. I don't want anyone after this saying, wait a second, I would have brought some other information or provided something else if I had known. Um, so the question is, Mr. Malik, I can set this to March 19th, give you some time to look at that counterclaim. If there's something more than there, you know, I need to have everything in the week before. Mr. Lawrence, and that's kind of where we're headed. I, I just want to be sure everybody's ready for a trial and not feeling, oh, if I would have thought I'm, of it. I, I looked it over. It, it's very simple. I, I'm ready for trial. Okay. Mr. Lawrence, are you ready to go? I'm ready. Okay. All right. Well, then let's do this. Let me make a note here. All right, so Mr. Malik, we're going to turn to you first and ask, um, why do you think you owed eighty nine seventeen? And as you as you look at things, you've seen the counterclaim, and you in all of this as well. You can kind of respond to that um, twenty two hundred that um, seems to be what Mr. Lorenzen thinks he's owed. And then is, if there's anything you want me to look at in particular in your exhibits, let me know so that we're all looking at the same thing. So what's your case? Um, well, basically I uh, wanted some custom work done to my car, uh, some aftermarket work. <laughs> what kind of car does he have? I totally would have pegged him for a bicycle guy. I'm just saying, right? Would we not have pegged him for a bicycle guy? Anyways, <laughs> I have so many questions too. A Honda Civic? Oh, probably. <laughs> Maybe a Kia. <laughs> I hope we find out what kind of car it is. A scooter. Scoot, scoot. A Prius, <laughs> Courtney. Um, <laughs> Chuck, what can you do to an 84 Chevette? A VW van, those are very valuable, Donald. You know, this isn't members only. Shouldn't be members only. If it is, I've done something terribly wrong. Sorry, Streamlabs. Okay. Uh, I think that it is one of those Japanese cars that has the uh, steering wheel on the wrong side. That's my guess. What are those? Hmm. 
You know what I'm talking about. An RF7 maybe? Or a, a Z3? I don't know. A Mitsubishi Eclipse? Is that what that is? Oh, I bet he has an Eagle Talon. Woo! Chuck, water broken, grandson on his way. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Um, I put an ad on line and uh, the defendant uh, contacted me and said he could do it um, in two to three days and that it would be $650 for the work. Uh, he mentions that price in the uh, document titled initial contact mail conversation. at that so this is your gmail discussion yep About 13 pages worth is there somewhere you want me to it is not here it's not salika really i'm gonna go check that with somebody else Someone who used to sell them. Yeah. On, on the on the on the initial page, page one. Page, okay. The beginning of your conversation. Yes. On the eleventh of February. Okay. So you must have been living here in Washington at the time. Yes. Okay. All right. And what car are we talking about? It's a, a Honda Del Sol uh, 97 VTEC. All right. And you're the, at that time, you were the owner of that vehicle? Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, get it done two to three days. Apparently you're right. About I'm wrong. $650. All right. And so then what? Um, on page three of that same document, um, basically I, we discussed and he was going to do some Yeah, I'm getting made fun of hard for now. Thank you so much, Chris, by the way. And yes, I did get some mail. Thank you so much. Um, I will grab them in a second here. The set of pens, perfect for my post-it notes. Um, but he was just saying, yeah, and I drive a Supra, like a Supra. So, yeah, anyways, whatever. I got it wrong. Um, but is what kind of car is it that he's he's talking about uh insulation in the vehicle so he said um it would be 700 dollars if i bring my vehicle to his location okay three days and 700 more dollars is that what you understood or 700 yeah. Total? yeah three days three days total and 700 dollars total total okay so it went up $50. Yes. And another, all right. And then what? So uh, I agreed to that. And um, I had a contract made. It's called a Del Sol contract, which basically said I'm making an agreement with him. And uh, what uh, basically he was going to be installing a a, a wiring harness uh, hold on work. hold on hold the fucking phone hold the fucking phone right now are we he's talking about a honda del sol and did he just say he's having insulation put in it you guys this is what in the fuck is that i thought for a second you know what i thought he was talking about like maybe you guys uh the honda um cube like you know what is that called the honda 
pilot is it no whatever it is the square honda that has um like it's a square in the back and the back opens and it's really good for van lifing i would imagine i thought this guy was trying to like make a van life van he's like i need insulation put in it so i can weather the winters the honda element that's what it is gecko chaser how could i forget i sold one of those one time <laughs> Oh, I sold, I sold a Honda Element one time to the, this guy and he was so mean when I was selling him this car. So normally when you sell the car as the salesperson, you don't wash the car. There's a detailer that does that or a lot guy. Our lot guy was Kevin. And then he had like other lot guys that worked with him. But I was trying to be nice and they were busy and I sold the car and I was all happy about it i was like oh i'll wash this no problem kevin i've never had anybody fucking critique the wash job on their car before but this guy roasted me and then we had to send it back and they had to wash it again anyways and i was mad and wet in the worst kind of way blue honda element i remember Um, and then he would install um, some other electrical connections. He would install an alarm and accessories, which included a dash cam. And uh, also to be installed is three layer insulation. And he's, and it said it would be done in um, 72 hours and pack, and I would pay him cash on completion of the work. So the scope of the work is in here and the time, the amount. So you would refer back to that email for the amount. Correct. Okay, but it wasn't in here. But where it'll be done, the scope of the work and the time frame. Okay, all right, got it. And then? Um, so basically, um, if you look at the um, text conversation document. Okay, here, text conversation, all right. On basically on, on that uh, initial page, I tell him I'm leaving to his house to drop off the car on the 15th of February. Um, basically, we communicate about different things. He tells me um, he's not done. It'll take longer. Um, on page five at the um, at the bottom. Um, it says uh, February 27th. He says uh, he's sorry. He thought it was done and it'll be ready uh, when I return from my trip as I was leaving um, for a trip um, to a different country. Mm -hmm. And he said it would be ready when I return. I was uh, estimated I would be back in two weeks, but I ended up coming back um, in about a, a month or later. Um, on page six, um, it should be highlighted, um, I return on April 6th, um, and, uh, or I returned on April 5th and, uh, he replied on April 6th saying that the car was not done. So well beyond the 72 hours to about two months. Um, later, the vehicle was not complete, so I consider that a breach of contract. Mm -hmm. Can I turn on the light? And so, all right, so then you come back on April 6th, still not done. Um, did you, so you still haven't paid him anything? 
No, I, the only thing I did was supply all the parts and materials. That was the question. All right, so you did purchase materials that Mr. Loren you gave to Mr. Lorenzen? Yes. Okay. And those were purchased around, you know, sometime before the February 15th start date? Correct. All right, and what did those things cost? I didn't, I don't have those um, in the evidence. Um, I, uh, I didn't include that in the, in the claim. Oh, okay, so that's not part of the claim. All right. So how do we get to the $8,900? Um, oh, hold on, wait. So he's out no money. <laughs> he's provided the parts and materials, but not counting those in the lawsuit. And now he's... I'm I like I'm actually confused now as to what I guess the car does the guy still have the physical car uh this is a year old or more so this is the old case that's why she's wearing a mask she doesn't wear masks anymore the I took um if you look at uh the document called uh, um expert auto invoice there um, basically uh, says the at the bottom the total cost of repair is going to exceed the value of the vehicle hmm. not okay is that in the um is it under labor description or yeah in the bottom okay all right let me read that mm -hmm. Hi, Dana. Also, you guys, I'm writing out my white chocolate brownie recipe because it is so Okay, good. so you were advised at that point, $2,000 initial deposit required Touch. to begin. Hey, hold on, I'm just saying something about my recipe. It is so good that it is getting written down and put down, you know, put, put, on, put into writing. I need to get a folder for beside the microwave. Did you guys grow up with a folder beside the microwave for recipes? Ooh, food's here. Erica's lurking. Uh, I put it in the Credence and Mikey Discord already, Courtney, but I will send it to you too. Um, they are not weed brownies. They are white chocolate brownies, and they, they coffee cat the restaurant Moxie's, and they're so good. Estimate for final cost is not possible. Customer will pay 400 for eight hours of work to this point. So shop labor, 100 an hour, no storage fees. If the car is removed within two days of March, March 5th, this goes back to 2019, total cost of repairs is considered to exceed value of vehicle. There's several dates in here. December, so when was, I'm trying to figure out the dates on this. Okay, so this is April 30th of 2019. Can you help me understand other dates in here? December 11, 2018. Where is that date listed? In the, the very last, um, the second to last sentence in the description. Oh, um, they, they had the car for a while. Um, I guess they were really busy. And then when they finally got to working on the vehicle it took them a while to sort through the the damage so when did when did you take it in um i believe sometime in sometime in december okay so you came back in april it still wasn't done so and that was april of 2019 no 2018 i i didn't i didn't have i didn't i didn't take the vehicle uh until the end of 2018. Okay. And then the end of 2018, you took it into 
you got, help me out here. So April of 18, it's not done. When did you get the vehicle back? Uh, in October of 2018. Okay. And then you went to see expert sometime in 2019. And in, in, in 2018, the, like in uh, December. Okay. So December, they say December 11th, you came in, removed the top. So sometime in December of 2018. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what happened between April 6th and October, those six uh, months? Basically, uh, if you look at the text conversation document, um, he basically said he wanted more time to work on it. Um, uh, on the April, on page seven, on uh, April 18th, um, towards the middle of that document, I said it's already been, you know, another two weeks since I've returned from my trip. So it's been about, you know, two months and two weeks now, and he's still not done with the vehicle. So I would, I just want it back. All right. Um, he said it wouldn't be ready. It wouldn't be drivable. It wouldn't be back, back together. Um, he won't require the full $600, but he's done work. So he wants me to pay him something. So I ask him, um, on April 20th, on still on page seven, uh, which parts are done on the vehicle. Um, he said the wiring harness was done. Um, I told him I could pay for the things that were done, but I wanted to verify. Um, on page eight, at the very top, he says he's not gonna spend time showing me the things that work in the vehicle um, and that I could either let him complete the car, I could come take it and pay him 300 or I could take legal action against him. On April 24th, I was told not to not to touch the vehicle anymore by his attorney. I will have a chance. I'm going to hear from Mr. Malik okay. first. All right. So then, so then, and the vehicle is still with Mr. Lorenzen. Correct. Okay. You didn't, and so for six months it was there? Um, well, I dropped it off in February and I got it back in October. So, uh, right, so that's eight months, but between April and October, so did everything just kind of break down or is there? Uh, just a moment. Um, so basically, um, if you look at, just a moment, the uh, document titled Lawyer Letter. So in May, you contacted a lawyer and they wrote a letter to Mr. Lawrenson. Correct. Okay. Um, and negotiated or pro offered a, a way to settle things. So did you continue to try to work on after that or? or uh, yes. Solution? Uh Yes, that's correct. On um, the the lawyer basically said he was um, well. They suggested I just pay um, him three hundred dollars and take the vehicle. Um, so I contacted him to ask him, um, you know, to get uh, make sure everything like. This guy is so monotonous monotone isn't he is it just me this guy does he drive a car like yeah, yeah. can you imagine not being bothered that much 
Oh my God. So I, I wanted a, a basically a, a contract stating a signed uh, paper stating what he actually did to the vehicle. Uh, since I was paying him $300, I wanted to make sure I was paying him for something that he did. Um, so he basically you know, told me what he did, um, but on, um, on May 18th, he said the car was undrivable and I would have to tow it. Um, I mentioned I would have a difficult time finding a shop on that same page, page 10. Um, most shops don't want to take over somebody else's uh, work. So it took, so I had to call several shops and uh, I didn't have much luck. Um, so he lowered the price from $300 to $200. Um, I mentioned to him I didn't have a place to store the vehicle um, since my uh, house area does not allow for vehicles to be uh, Oh my God, what if he has not got dreads? What if he is connected to a computer with those wires back there? And this is an early attempt at using an AI. <laughs> exactly, K Crimson. Beta AI for <laughs> himself. He just really fuck. Oh, so he's suing for $8,000. <laughs> $100. He's plugged into the matrix, right? He literally looks like, it's, and I'm always high. Billy, Billy. Less high now. You'd be hard, hard pressed to determine my highness throughout the day. <laughs> Inoperable. Um, so he offered to com complete the vehicle um, for $500 total, and it would, it would be ready for me to take and drive, uh, still on page 10. Um, and he even said himself at the bottom, nobody's going to nobody's gonna take off. Um, where he left off for less than a thousand dollars. I told him I accept that on page uh, 11. Um, but he wanted me to pay him in advance. And I said I was not willing to do that. Uh, he threatened to put a mechanics lien on the vehicle still on page 11. I told him um, I did not want him moving the vehicle. Because I spoke of the, it's because I spoke of the matrix and I creed framed.
I told him um, I did not want him moving the vehicle. Uh, still on page 11, I ended up um, calling the police um, or the sheriff and they visited him um, and they basically told me it was a, a civil matter and they couldn't do anything. Uh, on page 11 towards the bottom, he, he then says uh, on May uh, 21 that he might just finish the car and charge me 12.59 for the work. I'm, I'm not sure where that amount came from. He then says my lawyer is garbage. I told him on page 12, I don't want to discuss this with him anymore. Uh, I made my offer and, you know, I'll talk to him in court. Again, we discuss more and um, on page 12 for from October 3rd, uh, he mentions um, he will take $300 cash. I contacted him that I found a place to store the vehicle. Um, so he said $300 cash, half of what we agreed. Then he says $400. Um, a little bit below that. Uh, I contacted him to arrange uh, getting a trailer um, to tow the vehicle. Um, I wanted to visit the vehicle before arranging the tow, so I went to his uh, location, inspected. Um, on the 18th of October is when I did that. Or that's when I uh, continued to talk. Uh, just a moment. Yeah, 18th. Uh, which is showing on page 13 at the very bottom. I mentioned to him that, you know, he, the dash cam was missing, was missing some of the alarm uh, modules and accessories were missing. Uh, so, you know, I was going to pay him the $300 as long as everything was there that I gave to him. Oh my God, this guy literally put me to sleep for a second. But Chris Engleby has woken me up. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much. <laughs> do, 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 do. Thank you, Chris. Oh my God. Also, Dana got a Baba mug. Chris has a Baba mug. I have a Baba mug. Not a sponsor yet. Um, this is terrible, terrible, uh, waste of court time. And I can't believe how much this guy is. Oh, killing me, killing me. It wasn't, um, he said he has the box on page 14 for the dash cam. Um, so then he throws out a number of $514 that I should pay him, but he'll take off $114. So bring it back to the $400. So again, more amount that he's just throwing around for me to pay him. Yes, Chris got me these really awesome pens that I put on my list. This one says fresh out of fucks. This one here says good fucking vibes. Um, I have more of them already out. They're awesome pens too. Thank you again, Chris. Um, sometimes I forget I put things on my Amazon list and then I see them and I love it. I could play him at 2x speed. I can't in this program though, Hector, unfortunately. <sighs> Streamlabs, that's a, a downside. Um, but it, yeah, it's almost like somebody is 
prompting him what to say very slowly. <laughs> the one time you need me to jump in and talk, I don't. No, I'm I'm trying to, well, I don't know. I think I was literally in taken, taken advantage of by his tone of voice. Mm -hmm. His tone of voice is taking advantage of me. Um, they're feeding him in via his matrix dress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Raining crayon on a cue card. Yes. Hey, do you know what? In Canada, we call what you guys call colored pencils, we call pencil crayons. Pencil crayons. Do I have 12 dildos on my Amazon list or a 12X dildo? Uh, probably both. Um, on page 15, um, I told, he, he talked about, he was changing locations and he was going to move the vehicle. Um, I told him, I do not give him permission to move it. Um, I said, I would call the cops. He said, I already called them. You dumb fuck. They sided with me. Vehicle is not completed because. You and your loyal told me not, not to touch it, but I can legally transport it. Um, Hold on, did he just say dumb fuck? Did he just say that? I'm pretty sure he said that. but he said it so in the tone, like it barely registered. Do you see how important tone of voice is? Um, what do we call three by five cards? Are you talking about index cards? We would call them index cards. The ones that you write on, like for school and stuff, we would call them index cards. Um. I said I would call the cops. He said I already called them. You dumb fuck. They sided with me. Vehicle is not completed because you and your loyal told me not, not to touch. You and your loyal, your loyal, Chris. You're loyal, actually, Chris. Thank you so much. Do, do, do. Ooh, let's put that on my list. I'm going to have to find out which ones the boys have. Um, I gotta, I gotta put them on. Yeah. And index cards. Yes. He talks in old school matrix printer. Yeah. How accurate is that? Like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, do I have flashcards in Canada? I, yeah. Those aren't a specific size though. It, but I can legally transport it. Um, he said, dumb fuck, Chris. He then Fight. says on page 15, towards the middle, he has zero conviction, so he could steal my car, sell it, or torch it, and he would be out of jail on Monday. Um, he's willing to spend a weekend in jail over this, or he could sell the car for $1,000. And that would be his bail money. Uh, or maybe he'll just drive it and race it and blow it up. But there's, there's no law against a man taking a vehicle, a mechanic taking a vehicle for a test drive. Um, he continues to send lots of texts. At this point, I uh, don't think I responded as I did not, did not want to engage with a hostile person. Um, on page 18, the last page, uh, he says, um, that I told him not to touch the car, uh, that, that I'm a nigger. 
Um, what happened to your lawyer? Whoa! Um, and at the end, he says uh, he is a. Uh, I will never look at my car again. Uh, and I didn't respond to anything after that. Uh, I finally got the vehicle sometime later in October, and I called a few shops. Um, Expert Auto was the shop that I uh, finally uh, got um, to accept the vehicle in its condition. I had it uh, towed over there. Um, how, did you, how did you end up getting the, the vehicle back? I had it towed from uh, his location. Okay. And then I had it towed um, to another location temporarily. And then I had to tow it again to uh, Expert Auto, so two tows. Um, if you look at the Expert Auto invoice, uh, it basically says the work that needs to be done, the wiring harness, which is electrical. They say the vehicle was towed in disarray, uh, a lot of parts. Um, it wasn't put together well. The I thought it was finished. He had all of these months and then he gets it and it doesn't even, it's not even put together. It's like duct taped together. This is such a nightmare. Oh, oh my God. Catalytic converter was missing. Um, the cat catalytic item is related to the um, exhaust muffler system which is underneath the vehicle. And that has nothing to do with electrical work. Uh, so he removed that. Um, those uh, exhaust items have a lot of copper in them and they're commonly sold for money to junkyards. Um, so he removed that. To who? To, to gun? Who? Of what is going on here? <laughs> this is car even worth a hundred bucks. In Florida, you don't even need the doors. <laughs> Pulled the catalytic converter and sold it. <laughs> oh God, these are junkyards. That, as well as missing hoses and other things, were disconnected. And then, um, of course, the uh, the dash cam that was missing and the alarm uh, accessories were all missing. Um, so obviously, I have no evidence of what he did with it, but perhaps he sold it. Um, and then the shop basically said the repairs would exceed the cost of the vehicle. So I, uh, I again towed the car from there to another location where it still remains in uh, undrivable, incomplete condition. All right, so what is, so the 8917 refers to? Uh, I had an appraisal done on the vehicle. Pain and suffering, your honor. It's my pain and suffering that I've been suffering in pain forever forever ever forever ever sir i'm gonna need more energy more energy <laughs> please uh let me look at that that was done that was done in uh 2000 or no sorry that was the wrong um Appraisal, just a moment. <laughs> Donald, <laughs> like he's fucking tripping. I had an appraisal done on the vehicle in uh, on August seven, two thousand seventeen. I can, I could. So I don't have that document in the evidence, so I didn't know it was needed, but I could send that to you now if you need that. Well, I'm wondering 
why you're claiming 8917 what you got to help me understand that uh that was the appraised value of the vehicle okay so you're asking for um the value of the vehicle that from when you handed it you're saying that it was worth 8917 when you handed it over to mr Lorenzen, and you got back something less than 8917 it was actually worth more because I had more work done to it, but I, I don't have an appraisal, so I just accepted the 8917 appraisal. Okay. And then, and so when, when the expert auto repair says um, total cost of repairs is considered to exceed value of the vehicle, did they give you a sense of? what they meant by that, what that would, what the numbers were? They said there was no way to know. Uh, the vehicle was just in so much bad condition. There was a lot of missing parts from areas where he had no reason to be, like, like engine. They said there could be possible engine damage, like sabotage and other things. And they basically would have no idea. They, they would have engine damage sabotage is that what he literally just said he's joking right can you can you imagine this guy trying to buy an engagement ring oh you buy a cubic zirconium and sue the jeweler when she says no it's fake for emotional distress so bad oh so bad I have to do the wiring um, and then they would have to look at the engine and other things, and they're, they basically had no way of, of estimating that, and they said it would probably at least be more than the cost of the vehicle. So that's when I just decided to, you know, accept that and not pay them anymore to, to try to figure out what was done by that, uh, uh, by the defendant. So did you give, um, you bought parts and provided those to Mr. Lorenz and any other, I don't, you didn't give him any other cash or checks or payment other than the parts? Uh, no, he, he asked for more, more materials after he had the vehicle. So I went and uh, bought that, bought them for him. Okay. All right. But what you're claiming is not that, what you're asking is the the appraised value of the vehicle, which might, if experts to be believed, then it wouldn't get it back up to that appraisal value, but the value of the vehicle in 2017. Yeah, I, I, I was, I didn't have all the receipts for everything. Um, so I just, uh, you know, I, I figured you needed evidence and this was the evidence that I had that could prove the amount well, the, the appraisal, where was that done? When, how was that done? Who did it? It was done by um, a company called Auto Loss on uh, the 7th, August 7th of 2017. And why did you have that done? Uh, I had an issue with um, my insurance company. Uh, oh, he creed framed. <laughs> he creed framed. What do we think? You think they're even so far? What is behind that sheet? I think that that is a window. A window. And that's what I think. A, a repair damage. They uh, didn't want to uh, cover the correct amount. Um, so I had a professional appraisal done um, to take care of that. And so that, uh, that appraisal was saying that on the, was it a market appraisal in its shape as it was? If you were to go out to the, the market, you could sell it for 89.17? Yeah, yeah, this particular, uh, the Del Sol is, is a, 
is a uh, fairly common vehicle, but I had the 97 uh, VTEC, which is pretty rare. 97, um, bro. The 97, because that was the last time they made it, and they didn't make many of the VTEC uh, dual cam models, and I had uh, a lot of work done to it. Um, you know, exhaust system, the catalytic converter was new and uh, aftermarket. Uh, the engine was uh, modified. So basically all that was taken into consideration and the uh, company, appraisal company, evaluated that it would be the 8917 in the marketplace. All right. Um... Now I understand your claim better. Anything else before I turn to Mr. Lorenzen? Uh, no, that was uh, everything. Okay, all right. So Mr., um, is there any response you have to his counterclaim? For what is he going to say? <laughs> Bruh, I just put 20 k into this car. This is, again, this is terrible. A 1997 Honda Del Sol. I'll just give you all a moment to look that up. Um, <laughs> and then laugh again about his hair blowing in the wind. Oh. 2208. Um, well, as, as I was explaining my, my case, he was throwing a lot of random numbers out there for amounts that he wanted. So this amount that he threw out is another random number. Um, we had originally agreed on six, $700 for the work. So how it became four times that much for work that was incomplete stolen parts, breach of contract, and rendering the vehicle. Remember the car is in pieces. It's been towed somewhere in pieces. Oh, God. Hoses left, right, and center. I mean, <laughs> this is how people used to come into the car dealership all the time. They'd be like, no, no, it's like $19,000 you owe me on this. No, I don't think so, sir. I don't think so. <sighs> vehicle undrivable. I, I'm not sure where that amount comes from. All right. So let me turn to Mr. Lorenzen. Um, you've got a counterclaim and you're also answering the, the claim of Mr. Malik. So let's go ahead. That car, there, that car was never, ever appraises over eight thousand dollars i mean blue book on it's between 900 and 1500 bucks and that's it had three hundred thousand miles on it i mean it was never worth nowhere near eight grand but just um, to start from the beginning when he brought the car over i was to install a wiring harness a custom wiring harness for it to do a electronic roof for it and i asked him if it, uh, there's three different generations of wiring after the after cars got computer systems in them there's obd0 obd1 and obd2 you can't mix the three together. Um, the wiring harness that he had bought for his car was an OBD1 right-hand drive for single red cam automatic. And the, his car was a left-hand drive OBD2 dual red cam manual transmission. So I, there was no way for me to use the old, old style harness in the new style car. And he knew we were having problems. So I tried to integrate the old harness, that was the harness that he provided into his original wiring harness that came in the car and he knew we were having some difficulties just because it was i mean trying to put a old generation into a new generation car and then he left on vacation and was gone for five weeks so i decided to i figured he just wanted the car done so i decided to completely make a wiring harness from from nothing and the day he got back he came over and said that or came over came over to the house to check the progress of the car i showed him the wiring harness i wasn't quite done yet at that point but i showed him the wiring harness that i was building and which i i still have to this day i still have the wiring harness here and um about two weeks later his lawyer contacted me after he called the cops on me a couple times 
and they told me not to touch the vehicle anymore. This is the kind of thing that I get in trouble for all the time. People will be like, what in the fuck are you doing with your arm? Why is it twisted like that? Why can you twist it like that? Why are you doing this? <laughs> like, it's so fucking weird. But what is, why is he sitting like that? Oh, what a nightmare. <laughs> what a nightmare. And so you're, do you he, agree he, he that got the, the car. You agree the contract was for about $700 and three days work? Yeah, but that was that was assuming that he had the right the right wiring harness. Okay, right. and where so so why do you think you're owed twenty two hundred? Then help me out there. What's the twenty two hundred? Six hundred for the wiring. Six hundred or seven hundred for the original work that I was to do to it. Okay. Um, uh, two hundred and two hundred eighteen dollars for the connectors that I had to buy for the wire the, for the complete custom wiring harness I made, which was all brand. They were all brand new um, plugs from Honda. And it cost me $150 to send the wiring harness to Omega Leads after I received the, I mean, I paid $150 to this company Omega Leads where I mailed the wiring harness to on the 11th of January. And for them to just to look, look over the wiring harness, I guess, they couldn't verify the functionality of it, but they could just to check out the construction of it. And it cost me $113 to overnight it to them. And after April, I mean, I had the car stuck in the middle of my driveway from April to October, so some storage fees, because they told me not to touch the vehicle anymore. So the rest is storage fees? Yeah, $7 a day. Which and how is, much, was, what is that? That that comes out to, uh, oh, I don't know, I have it somewhere here. Um, 660, bu 660 bucks about, give or take. All right. So that's your claim for 2200 not quite. Yes. All right. All right. And so where, um, so apparently you thought there was a, I mean, there was this contract that I see you both signed for $700. Um, can you help me understand how you spent more? Why you spent more? Was there recontracting? Was there information that, well, no, it was just he was he was he was gone for over a month, like five or five and a half weeks, and it was just the wiring harness that he provided was was absolutely no good to me. It didn't work. It wouldn't work. There was no way to integrate it into his old harness. Were there discussions so I, with Mr. Malik about all of this? There was at first, but then he left on vacation. Okay. He knew I was having trouble. He knew I was having trouble with the harness originally. That it just it wouldn't work. All right, so. I'm just trying to, in all the information that I have here before me, um, it seems to me that your contract was 700. It sounds like that's what everyone, that's the writing we have. And then you spent more and beyond that. And I'm wondering why, and did you think you were gonna get recompensed for that and why then? Well, yeah, I mean, the wiring harness that I built, I mean, any company was charging $5,000 for this wiring harness. I mean, I. The seven hundred dollars was just for the installation of the harness he provided. Oh, Erica, yes, the be the Kelly Blue Book value is way, way lower than that. Loud. I hope your hip feels better. Oh, sorry to hear that. I don't think Chris is laughing at you. He's just smiling. Um. Yeah. Good night. Oh, you're so sweet, Chris. This guy, seriously, I, I'm going to tell you guys the funniest part about this at the end, but this is just like a tale of two morons. Was that you, K Crimson, who said that before? Like, a tale of two morons coming together. But the harness he provided me no good. Okay. So did you talk so the rest about is for construction that? of the wiring harness and that I made. There, was there some new decision? Did you talk to him about that? That you? Did? I, I didn't because I couldn't. I couldn't get in talk, contact with him because he went to Japan. All right. And I just, I just, I just thought he wanted the car done, so I just jumped the gun. I called it. 
Japan. What the fuck does this guy do that he's put all this money into this car? That he's flying off to Japan for a month? <laughs> Wait a second. I have questions now. Right? I have questions. Um, but also, I was earlier right when i said he's like he's driving a car imported from japan i bet he wants to or i bet he's got another one that he's imported that he actually drives around that he can hook up to the matrix hair that he has and then just went ahead and built a wiring harness without okay. i guess without verifying that's what he wanted done but okay at that point it was too far i was i was too far in to turn back and it reinstall his original wire harness because it just wouldn't it it, it, it had been disassembled already to, to construct a new one so i was too far in to turn to turn back all right and i couldn't get in contact with him for like five and a half weeks so i just went ahead and made one so and by the time he got back i still wasn't quite done with it because I, I got like over 150 hours into this wire harness mm -hmm. a lot more than 150 hours Sir, 150 hours? Okay, what are you, a lawyer? Padding hours, 150 hours? Two to three days. Oh, absolutely. All right. Um. So then Mr. Malik's claim of 89, 70. That's like six days, 24 hours a day straight. That's fucking weeks upon weeks of straight work. For somebody who's not paying? Why? That doesn't make any sense. That part doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Why would you do that? 17. Um you're disputing that that car is worth that that car the car had 280,000 miles on it i mean it had a chunk of the whole quarter panel it was full of bondo and it had a whole chunk missing from it that car was not worth i mean kelly blue book got values at like 1510 dollars on the high end and that's that's being generous the car was never worth that even after this a whole conversion was done it wouldn't be worth that mm -hmm. Any comment on, if you want to, you don't have to, but the expert auto repair invoice? Well, I mean, the car was torn apart, yeah, but he came and took it at three o'clock in the morning. So I didn't even know he was, I didn't know he was coming after it that day. So, I mean, it, it, yeah, it, was, it was complete in disarray, in, like in disrepair, but I mean, it's, I, I, you have to, I had to completely disassemble the car to remove the wire harness, the whole, the whole entire, like every piece of wire came out of the vehicle. Okay. So eight eight months after you started. Well, they told me not to touch it after April. They, his lawyer told me not to touch the vehicle at all okay. anymore. I'll give you two months then. All right. And then he came he came over on um the like the beginning of October and stated he needed to measure the car or whatever to see how to see like see what size trailer he needed to transport out of there. And he just came with um, a friend of his just to try to intimidate me and tell me to. I don't know that he was they were taking the car right then they didn't come with a truck and trailer or anything and then he knew what size the you know so to see what kind of size trailer it would fit on okay. and i i did lose my temper at the end tech, like between text messages there i did but i mean i had sat i sat with the car in the middle of my driveway because he took the controller for the air ride so the car sat completely on the ground so i couldn't move it for five months, knowing that it was in the middle of my driveway. Hmm. So, I mean, I got irritated, yeah, but. Just trying to figure out what your contract here was. All right. Is there any, uh, you've sub Who amongst us could be so nonchalant when on a camera? In a court, no less. But I'm being serious now. This is weird. This is gross. Like, <laughs> this 
whole fucking thing is a cluster. Did they think this was like Judge Judy? Where one of them was going to get it covered for both of them. They're like, hey, you go for 22 hundy. I'll go for 89 hundy. We, we just have to tell them a crazy story about my Dell soul. And then they'll pay both of us and we get to go to L.A. But dumbass files a real lawsuit instead. And then they end up here. Like that makes actual more sense than this story. Applied some pictures and a letter. Those, from yeah, someone. those are all the wire harness that I still I still have the wire harness. It's sitting right here. It's sitting right here. Okay, the one that you purchased, or no, the, the one, one that I built. The one that you built. Okay, and then what's the letter from a mega guy? What what am I to take from that? That's um that's the fifth company that I contacted, and I tried to explain the situation about me building wire harness for him and him not like not I guess he, he this is the only company that would hear me out. So I mailed him the wiring harness. He's down in California. I mailed him the wiring harness and he looked it over and he said it was, he said it was well constructed. All right. I mean, Grant, he charged me $150 just for the, to check the wiring harness out, but. Okay. All right. So he says that, Obviously, since he doesn't have a Dell Soul, he's not able to really uh, figure that out, but give it a quick look. Quality, formula, no way to test the functionality, but able to test for resistance and confirm. All right, well planned out, nicely executed, good materials. Okay, all right. So, and that's, you. you took up to build that harness and those are some of the costs the two three four five hundred almost five hundred dollars worth of cost to build that it looks like and the mailing back and forth and all of that all right hmm. so i have a i have a question mr malik this expert auto repair was this the four hundred and thirty-five dollars you paid them. What was that for? For them to basically check everything out and tell me how much it would cost to to fix. Okay. Like that was the deposit or estimate or cost to even take the vehicle in and look at it. Okay, so that was just the estimate cost. All right. All right, um, let me kind of look through some of this. So, all right, we've got a, a claim and a counterclaim here, um, looking at all the information that you both provided and what I've heard from you both. So Mr. Malik is asking the court to assess um, the appraisal rate from three years ago, the market value three years ago um, that he received. And Mr. Lorenzen is asking for the $700 original contracted for and then on top of that storage fees and what it costs for him to build the new harness. Um, all right and then in looking at the expert auto repair um, estimate um, what it's difficult to do here is to kind of come down and accept number here. So I think we agree I can the contract was for $700 in two to three days of work. It's not clear, and I don't think um, it's fair to say that the contract included. I mean, Mr. Lawrence, 
You spent that money on your own accord. Uh, the about 500, 218, 115, 113, you spent that on your board. It wasn't this contract apparently, and you just kind of made a decision without getting that determined that that's what Mr. Malik wanted. So I'm not um, giving that to you. The $700, two months, and then eight months, and then it's in this disarray, um, the brief a contract, I'm not granting your um, $700 nor storage fees. So I'm not granting the counterclaim in any way, dismissing that uh, given the breach of contract originally. And as I said, you took up work of your own and made these decisions of your own without um, making a contract again with Mr. Malik. And Mr. Malik is aiding, asking for about $8,900 for an appraisal rate from 2017. And I'm looking at what expert auto repair is saying. They're saying that to put the car back together, it's going to be $2,000 down. And it's more expensive to, to put it back together than it's worth. Um, and they don't give me an understanding of what they think it's worth anywhere here in in 2019, two years later. So what I'm gonna do is there is some equity that this court can do and I'm making a judgment against you, Mr. Lorenzen, of um, a $5,000 uh, given um, the- He took it to them- And I'm not hearing argument anymore, Mr. Lorenzen. I've made the decision. This is appealable. If you like. Now I guess Mr. Lorenzen is gone. And the filing fee, Mr. Malik, and did it cost you any money for service? Any bucks for that? What was that about? Can you give me? Oh, yeah, it was, it was funny. <laughs> and that was for what? For mailing for the sheriff? I can't quite remember how you did that. I, I found somebody uh, locally. I'm absolutely shocked. Okay. As I was watching, I was laughing to myself. We're going to let it play out, but here's the thing. I... I'm laughing because the guy up there, obviously, like, picking his nose, being all weird, like, it's a weird video, right? But I'm pretty, I got it off his channel. Like, he, he posted it. Watch it at all. I saw that, I was like, oh, interesting. I know this court. Let's see what this guy posted. Like, he posted this, right? So when I, I didn't watch any of it first. So this is all a surprise. Partway through. Oh, wait, he's the fucking one that posted it. Now, why would he post this if he didn't win? Or... Is he, uh, uh, you know, posting it because, you know what I mean? Like, those are the thoughts I had. He's, well, I guess he's a YouTube creator. I believe the, the like, four subscribers. Uh, he did it for those subs. And you know what? Every sub is important. Every sub is important. <laughs> okay, let's finish this off before we call it a night. Uh, online. They charged you $20. I offered the $20 um, to do that and that amount and served it. You guys, you 
guys, this is fucking hilarious. Ah, uh, this is the kind of weird people, angry people, judges making odd decisions. I will link your channel on my channel, by the way, for sure. Um, wow. <laughs> I am shook it. All right. Well, we've got someone back. And so, um, following trial, uh, and this uh, order, this judgment is in the court file. And then it's up to you, Mr. Malik, to take it from there. Uh, I had a, a question, if that's all right. Sure. If I submit um, like current receipts, of work done and everything. Um, like I had recent work done as well. Your claim is heard at what you claimed here today has been decided. Okay. All right, against Mr. Lorenzen. So, and I can't give you legal advice as what you're gonna do next as to anything you've got. Um, but as to what you claim today, that's. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. So you can leave our hearing. All right. And have we completed? All right, so we're adjourned. And we are adjourned, my friends. Wow, one love court like that. You know, when it just surprises you. That shock came from left field, if you know what I'm saying. You guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening every single one of you for all of your support and appreciate each and every one of you oh, let me get this out of here um yeah i'm blurry i'm fucking lighting problem i think hold on let's just try one thing before i go let's turn off that lighting less no, it's more blur. So then I need to play it. The light on so much. But it's still blurry. You hate me. That's actually too bright. I wish I had sunglasses. I think it is a slow internet too. Listen, have a wonderful, have a wonderful evening. Um, I appreciate you uh, going, all the all that kind of stuff. Uh, say the outro. That's my job. I love you. I'm proud of you. See you in the next video. Bye.